How are you doing? Welcome to live stream number 108. My name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to join today's video where we are going to talk about how to make anything round with Infusion 360. Should be a good, uh, good topic. And I'm going to drizzle in, I think, some tips and tricks within there because some of the people who uh, maybe are well known around CAD will say Revolve. But I'm gonna, so I'm gonna throw in a couple of tips so hopefully you get something out of it too. Good to see all the people in here. <sighs> Let's talk about it. All right, so what happened was that last Wednesday evening, I did a live stream on Facebook where I modeled up uh, a magnifying glass. If you haven't seen that a video, that is also up here on YouTube where this video lives. Well, one of the things I got from that was, hey, you didn't make the glass. Um, I made the glass flat. I didn't give it the convex, concave, convex surface, I think it is. Um, and I did not on purpose because it was an absolute beginner. So if you're looking to do that kind of stuff, you're not an absolute beginner anymore. You are getting a little bit better. So um, today, I want to make sure that we get that clarified, that I show you how I would model up that glass. Plus, as you can see, I'm actually doing a little bit of cooking show up here because I got some other files I want to show you. That said, also, look at this orange line that we have here today. This is important. Today, Tuesday, December 19th, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time, uh, there the servers are down for for maintenance what that means is that you cannot save up to the cloud or pull files down from the cloud no worries you can still work offline for that hour but honestly eight to nine pacific time i don't know about you i'll be sleeping <laughs> i'll tell you that uh or at least on my way to on, on my way to bed but you can still use fusion it's just going to do it all locally all right just want to make sure that I pointed that out. That is right there. If you haven't opened Fusion today, you would have seen that. So uh, let's go in and uh, talk a little bit about how we would make a magnifying glass that has a convex kind of surface on it. And some people pointed out that um, the um, the revolve. I couldn't find it for a second. The revolve function is absolutely uh, the tool. Pretty much to make anything that is round within within Fusion. I want to show you a couple of examples uh, on that. Like I said, with a couple of tips and tricks thrown in in there. Um, now the Revolve always needs a profile, and then it needs some kind of an axis to uh, kind of revolve around. So to do this magnifying glass, um, I will start a sketch. Nothing new with that. I will select a a, a plane to sketch on. And I'm going to be a little lazy uh, with this. So I'm going to hit uh, alpha line and I'm just going to draw a vertical line up. They're kind of like going to be, this is going to be our, our axes that we're going to uh, revolve around. So that line going up there, whoops, uh, like that. And I'm also going to create, I'm going to just create a line that's going to be uh, vertical here, horizontal here, and that's going to be 40. And I can see that it turned blue because I never got it tied down. So let's give that a constraint right there. Oops, I got the point selected. Horizontal right there. Okay. Um, and I also need a dimension on this one, of course. I'm going to make that eight. Okay. So I got a line and a line. Then I'm going to put in some kind of an arc. So I'm going to go in here. And I, you, if you follow me, you know that I like to use the three point arc. Um, and actually, I don't want it to go all the way down there because then it becomes sharp. So I actually probably need another line segment in here. Let's go four millimeters up with that. All right, let's get back to our arc. And I want to create an arc here to this endpoint. So this is kind of like the the convex area right right here. I would probably um, because. What we're going to do is we're going to be, we're going to mirror it over this line. So this is kind of like the convex shape and we're going to rotate around this line. So I probably would create a little helping line 
from here over. So this line here is not for anything other than let me create a tangency relationship. You see how this arc is kind of like blowing up like this? If I don't make that tangent, well, let me show you. If I don't make it tangent, let me just show you this. I'm going to revolve this. So I'm going to select this shape here and I'm going to revolve it around this axis. Okay. Now, it might be hard to see. You see how there's a dip right in the middle? It's like a dimple right there. That's not much of a good uh, magnifying magnifying lens. So this is not acceptable. Plus, you see, I've only got half of the lens. You're going to need a curve on both sides, right? So let me just click on that. I'll delete that. Go back into our sketch. Right-click, edit sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tangency relationship between here and here. So now that's tangent. That's better. Now that, of course, screwed up with <laughs> this. Right, so now that is a little screwed up here. That can actually happen that it kind of like blows it up. Um, and because I had a dimension on this one, you will actually see right now I can't drag it back. I should be able to kind of like mirror that line. I'm going to delete it. Um, I don't know if I want to call that necessarily a, uh, a bug. So let's go ahead and create a line up here again. I can't remember how, what I made it, three millimeters maybe. Um, like that. And then... Let's go ahead here and make a coincident relationship between this one and this one. Okay. Oh, it's giving me three. There we go. Um, so now we have kind of like a full black uh, pie shape of this thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to mirror it. So I'm going to use sketch mirror here. So I'm going to mirror and it says, what do you want to mirror objects? This line here, um, I probably always want to mirror this line and this line. And I'm going to do that mirror line over this line. So now I kind of like get that shape right there. Now I'm going to do that revolve again. Go in and say revolve. So like this portion, this portion over this edge here. And uh, again, be aware of the options you have inside the menus in here um, because you can actually change the angle. You could, first of all, you could go up to, uh, or you can go an angle, what is 360, what is, you know, pretty lame, right? Uh, we could do like uh, 72 degrees and it will only go in, in 72 degrees. So that's a, that's a pretty, uh, pretty good function here. I'm gonna hit okay and hide my sketch and you will now see that we have uh, kind of like a lens type here. Now let me right click and go into appearances and let's go in and find glass because that was what I had in, uh, we just select a clear glass, drag that on and we now kind of have that lens for the magnifying glass that I left flat. Uh, the funny story to me actually is uh, maybe only funny to me <laughs> is that um, in when I used to work for a SolarWorks reseller, this was actually um, a question I got from a customer. How do you model up a lens? And I had absolutely no idea. I was like completely like I couldn't see where I should start. The revolve function that made it look easy, right? Um, when you look at it, it kind of like when you're looking at the sketch, you're thinking, oh, I just, uh, I just can kind of like revolve uh, that around there. So the revolve function is absolutely uh, one of these tools that you need to have in your arsenals. I wanted to give a couple of different uh, examples on this just to keep you on for a few minutes longer, show you a couple of tips and tricks. For any of you car guys out there, um, a piston... On, on a pod would probably also be a revolve. So if we go in here, click revolve, and we select the profile, and we select uh, the rotating sketch, right? That kind of um, gives us a, a, um, a revolve surface. Now, I wanted to show a little trick uh, that you might find useful. Let me go back into that sketch of this piston. Uh, you see here how I have the slope of the top of the pit's piston 
kind of like a curved surface uh, like this. So so I get kind of like, I don't know what you call the convex surface. Is it convex or concave? Now I'm confused. I'm confusing myself. Uh, the top here. I want to show you another neat, neat trick in here. Let me just open up a new pop file and uh, start a new sketch here. And let me go in and select something like a polygon, just to select something uh, weirdly shaped. Let's hit Q and let's extrude some flatness on that one, right? Con um, polygon right here, right? Now, how would you make this surface concave, convex, convex, <laughs> convex? Um, thank you for the chat. How would you do that? Well, yesterday we were talking about a, uh, another area, the patch environment. So here's a neat trick. If we go into the patch environment, we create a new sketch and I'm just gonna select uh, this plane right there. So now I'm kind of like looking on the side and let me sketch a helping line. So from the origin up on this thing here, I'm just gonna sketch my revolving line, right? And then I could go in and select a my three-point arc again. That's fine. Select the three-point arc. Make sure it goes like past here, and kind of like make um, a sketch out here. And you should, of course, always uh, fully define these. But what I want to show you is if we in the patch environment, we also have revolve. No different than the revolve that we don't. There you go, YouTube fan. Uh, no different than the revolve we have in the model environment, except I'm going to select this line and oh, we're not going to have a chain on. Just going to select this line here and I'm going to revolve that around. Now we get, remember when we talked about this yesterday, the, that in the patch environment, it's a non thick kind of, there's no thickness to, to this shell that we just created here. And now if we go back into the model environment, and this is important. Like I said yesterday, when you walk, when you're talking inside of Fusion, don't forget you can jump from area to area. There's a very cool tool in here called Replace Face. So you select what source is your uh, you want to uh, you want to work it up to. So I'm going to select the bottom of our polygon here. Select the target face. What is that I just created here? And just like that, hit OK we just replaced the face on the polygon with the one we created uh, in the patch environment. So let me just go in here and it's sitting in here. You could right click on it and you could remove it or you could just turn it off because it doesn't really bother anybody. But now we use Revolve to actually completely replace that face. Huh, interesting, right? Um, so that is a cool way to make a, a another kind of uh, surface in here. So that's definitely one of those tricks that I hope that you knew, that you didn't know, that you now know, that makes this add more value to your fusion experience. Because that's really all I want to do, just add a little bit more value to you. Okay, uh, what about this one? A, I, I stole this from, from uh, Google, I pinged, uh, a car rim. So what we have here is really just a line and then I just kind of like roughly sketched, like really, really roughly. Let me just hide the canvas for a second. I really, I didn't even fully define this sketch. Uh, it looks kind of, I don't know, a reindeer with antlers, nothing too cool about it. But if we go into our Revolve tool, we select that and we select our axes then I think we have a pretty cool car rim. Maybe, somebody will say. Uh, maybe not. So, <laughs> maybe need to do some more stuff to it, right? Oh, this is like an old American car rim, like Chrome. Um, so, you know, again, something that, that you would maybe think, how the heck do I go about creating a rim on a car that is very complex? Well, it is complex, I guess, if you have to make one, but in, in a modeling environment, it was really just um, a bunch of sketch line following and use uh, the revolve. The last one, just because I think that's kind of funny, 
uh, you know, what about a beer? Like I put in the description of this, this video, look around you, everything, everything looks like it's round. This one here, no different, uh, really just sketched a line down, kind of like follow the profile, everything is line and arcs, instead of this, this is a spline, bunch of live streams talking about this in the past. Let's go in and uh, revolve that. So I'll select this area here, select the axes, and there is uh, the beer bottle. Now at this point, it actually doesn't look like much of a beer bottle. Could right click, hit appearances, and there is actually green glass in here, uh, but my experience is that uh, the glass, the glass actually, let's put the glass on it. It makes it hard because you, it's see-through now. And a normal beer bottle is so dark that it's not really see-through. So I actually would put paint on, but what you can do is you can right click and hit edit. And if you do that, you can actually start manipulating that green to get something that maybe is a little bit more to the color. Now, if you were rendering this, then you maybe would do the, the glass. But if you're just gonna show it like this, this uh, might be, um, be useful. Now, of course, this beer bottle is pretty useless. It doesn't have um, a hole in it. There, let's jump over and use our shell command. We've used that one before. Select a face, and that will go, whatever face you're selecting will go away. Everything else is gonna be shelled out. So I'm gonna hit one millimeter and everything gets shelled out in here. However, notice everything gets shelled out one millimeter uniformed. And though I want everything to be uniform, let me do a section view. Section analysis, turn the organ on, select here. Um, we want kind of like everything to be, be uniform, but we know a beer bottle is not uniform in here, right? Like one millimeter, it gets, just go straight up here. Here's a neat thing. Um, if you have never played with this, check this out. If I select this inner face here and I click delete on my keyboard, <laughs> not that delete. Let's try to select this inner face here. Delete that, you actually will remove uh, portions of this. Fusion will try to heal itself the best it can. See what order I'm selecting uh, this in. It actually makes it straight. Um, so that was just in what order I deleted it on on my keyboard. So I select the inner, let's do, can we do it with the analysis on? I didn't try that. So analysis is on. Let me select this inner ring here and hit delete on my keyboard. And Fusion tries to heal this up the best it can. So it's not about what you're deleting, it's more about uh, what's around it. So again here, I'm selecting this inner face here, hit delete. And you see how it kind of like straightens it up here. Now we are gonna have a thickness issue right here, but of course we could go in here and if you do select that face and you did a Q for press pull, then it's gonna become an offset face. And you could now add that uh, remaining uh, thickness on that one there and make that uh, unified. Whoa, is that pretty cool? I hope that's cool. If you already knew this, uh, then you you are pretty pretty good. Now another thing I wanted to show here is um, I forgot to put a fillet on the bottom here, right? So we got to put a fillet on. So I'm going to hit F for fillet. And if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. Uh, hit the fillet here and I'm going to start here. Put a fillet in. Now you will see that we're actually breaking the bottle. Because when that fillet becomes bigger than the one millimeter, um, the one millimeter shell command, right? We have that shell through there. That fillet breaks that. Well, what if we put the fillet before the shell command? So remember, you can grab down here in the tree. I can move back. Here's our shell command. I move past that. See how it's thick now? Now, if we hit F for fillet and drag this in and put the fillet on, right? Now the fillet lives before the shell happened. We move back again. Now there's no issue because now uh, when we do our section again, 
you will see that the fillet is now within here because it, it happened so when it does the one millimeter offset it's going to add that fillet in there just like it is in uh, in real life the last thing i want to do is this just because why not is go in here now when we have done live streams in the past you will see that we use a lot of attached canvas actually if you look at the car rim you will see that i have a canvas on it that was what i used to kind of like sketch that whole thing up if you look at the the tuborg danis beer here you will see i also used a canvas for that well the other option we have in here is decal decal is different than canvas canvas as you can see kind of like on the pop-up menu is created so you have something you can sketch over where decal is like a sticker on the part so if we go in here and hit decal select the face for that decal because it's like this round face select an image to do Just give me one second and of course i have a uh, a tuborg that i i did a very rough job uh stitching out of photoshop as you can see i just used the poly like the lines here but we you don't care uh scale that up a little bit something like that maybe um and we now have kind of like that beer bottle i should have cleaned it up a little bit better but now we kind of like have that uh on there as a as a sticker and of course you could now uh, go into uh the render environment and uh, and, and model that up that was really what I was planning on kind of showing today. I hope I was not going too fast. But the Revolve, and we're actually going to use it again tomorrow. Where tomorrow I'm going to show you the three ways that I model things up. And this is kind of like to help also closing the gap on the bodies versus component video we did last month, Monday, a week ago, something like that. So I hope that this was useful. Uh, kind of like remember the revolve anytime you see something round think about if you don't want to revolve it you just kind of like sketch half of it make us an access to revolve around and uh, and that will do it all right folks hope that was useful hope that I had a little bit of value these a couple of tips and tricks in there that you were not aware of inspired you or whatever my email address as usual is down in the description area if you have any future topics you would like to see or suggest more than welcome to shoot me an email um really appreciate it gonna end it right here 23 minutes i think that is good for a tuesday this close to christmas we got 122 people in here it's absolutely awesome you guys are the best if you're watching the recording thank you so much if you are watching the live stream i'm gonna jump into the chat and say hi to everybody Take care, folks. See you tomorrow.